How's it going? If you're watching this video, you must have just purchased a Vortex ECU mapped and designed by Twisted Development. So today we're gonna to go over some of the settings that are just gonna make this experience better for you. Uh, we created this Vortex user guide, and what that is is just an information on the cool new product that you just bought, how to navigate your way through the settings, how to know what they do, stuff like that. So the first thing is gonna be the TPS endpoint setting. So Vortex has a really cool feature where you hold the kill switch the entire time of the process, you, this thumb on the kill switch, you're gonna tap the starter button with the throttle closed. The ECU is gonna receive that information that that voltage of the throttle position sensor is closed. It's gonna store it in the ECU. You're gonna kill switch still on, hold it wide open, the throttle, tap the starter again, and then it's gonna receive that information. So now the range of throttle is gonna go from bottom to top, and the ECU is gonna store that memory internally. So that's a, a really cool setting of the Vortex. Like if your ECU is way off, if you put a new one, whatever, it still has to be close in the range of where the other one was if you line the paint marks up. Uh, however, this is accepting the information and able to create the scale that direction. So if you do not have an electric start, what you're going to do is pretty much the same process. You're just going to use your leg to kick the bike over. Thumb on the kill switch. The throttle is going to be in the closed position. Kick it one time, then go ahead to wide open. Kick it one time. Now the ECU is storing that information. So uh, map selector and fuel trim operation. The Vortex ECU has 10 pre-programmed power settings that explain by the map sheet and you're included in your box. By changing the X10 position on the ECU, the user can change the type of power, how it's going on. So if you have just got your ECU, you'll see that we pre-click the ECUs. Um, some bikes through field testing, we have found that they want to be a little bit leaner than where we tune them. Um, we try to get you as the end consumer to the finish line of the best settings that we think most people are going to enjoy. So like if you have a KTM 350, you might have your trim settings on three on the low, three on the mid and four on the high. Well, that's because we've been testing so much with guys out in the field and everybody loves that feeling. Um, so also to explain a little bit better on what are fuel trim settings. So the low clicker is gonna, every, every one of the clickers is gonna start life on five. The low five, mid five, high five, okay? Um, that's where we do the tuning. That way we know every ECU has been tuned the same and we know 555 is on our dyno with the load we have and everything is 13 to one stoichiometric air fuel ratio. Uh, so the low clicker is gonna handle 5% throttle to 25% throttle. So that's like your area one, your touch, getting right into the turn, you go to get to it. Um, that also creates a lot of response feeling because if you blow through that area, it's not gonna have so much fuel. So that's gonna be the low. Now the mid is gonna be 33 to 66. Okay, so that's like you're, you're past the low, you're coming through the turn, you're hunting to get onto the gas. If you wanna deaden that area, maybe it's really rough, maybe whatever you would wanna richen those clickers up. If you wanna liven it up, you know, maybe give it a little bit less fuel. And then whenever you finally get to the stop, 75% and 100% throttle is gonna be the high clicker. So that's like, if you're at Glen Helen, you go down the start straight and you change the high clicker, all you're affecting is wide open going down the start straight there. So um, each of the clicker positions is two and a half percent of the base map. So it's not a direct two and a half percent. It's two and a half percent of whatever the value of, of the fueling is. Uh, so feel free to move that around. Like I said, more punchy, more aggro is going to be going a little bit leaner. Uh, if the bike's a little bit too much, you want to give it more fuel to make it a little bit more docile so it doesn't respond so quick underneath you. So that's some of the tricks that we're doing. And a lot of that stuff, depending on what we've done in the field, is already built into the best power and torque and all of the other settings that you're probably reading on your map sheet right now. So I plugged in my ECU and the bike either has a high idle or a low idle. What should I do? Great question. Uh, the idle is gonna be a personal preference of yours. You're riding the motorcycle, it's your bike. I would say go ahead and move the idle to where you want it. And then after you have the idle comfortable, sometimes on a KTM or other models, you might have to turn the butterfly, right? And that's connected to the TPS. So after you get the idle where you want it, I always suggest you go back and do a TPS endpoint resetting, which was at the start of this video, uh, because basically now you're just grabbing the freshest values of where that throttle position sensor lives. Um, by all means, set it wherever you want. Okay, so in my map sheets, every, every tuner has 
what is called a style of tuning, okay? Uh, my style of tuning is a no BS direct approach to what's going on. Uh, so you might see minus two, minus three degrees ignition. What does that mean? So what I typically do is I'll, I'll develop the stuff here on the dyno. I'll go out into the field and I'll do a bunch of track testing when the models come out and I'll try to make sure I'm nailing down the best possible maps for that scenario. Well, not everybody has a complete stock bike and sometimes, you know, whether it's heavy load or there's other situations. So it's of my opinion that my job as a tuner is to give you a motorcycle that you can ride every day, no matter what the conditions. So if map one is best power and torque, and let's say map two is minus one degree ignition advance, minus two. So those settings are going to be directly what I'm doing, right? So if you are retarding the ignition timing, uh, it could go two ways. Like it may be my settings feel a little bit advanced, uh, maybe not, but when you retard them, it could give the bike a whole different feel. Like that, those things are the things that we do in the field whenever we're developing the bike with the customers that give the bike the lightness, the peppiness, the freeness. Uh, so I highly suggest at least going maps one through four and getting that feeling down because sometimes it changes so much. So we try to include pretty much if we were gonna go to a test day, let's say that uh, ECU that you got from us, we'd start on map one, and then I go, hey, let's try this. And then we go to map two and then three and then four. And then I would start working the fueling to see about what it is that each rider likes. So I try to do that test day scenario built into the design of the ECU so that basically you, the end consumer, is able to just go out, feel safe and comfortable to click through the clickers as if I was there with you and get the most out of your motorcycle. So that's our ultimate goal when we're setting up the maps. What are the test maps? Okay, so you might see on your on your mapping sheet that test maps. Um, what that is, is that's the future development of what I learned from one bike that I try to apply to something else. So in, in starting this business, the ultimate goal that I always thought was awesome was that I get to learn so many motorcycles. And what works on one motorcycle may not work on another, but it does help generate ideas. So if I put a test map in, it's that's pretty much what it is at that time. It's something that I feel is gonna be an advantage to the consumer. And it may be putting more ignition advance on the bottom to soften it or taking some away to soften it like you always have to find that comfort zone of what somebody really wants out of their motorcycle there's not one amazing motorcycle for everyone so so that hopefully should explain what is a test map uh, what are the two cables coming from my ecu okay so there's a eight pin connector um, and that is going to be all right let me start that again i hate the o's what are the two cables coming from the ECU? Okay, so the smaller of the two connectors is gonna be the programming port. Uh, I plug a data logger in there, I plug the cable to connect to the laptop into there. Those are the things that I need to push information to the ECU. The bigger of the two connectors, that's gonna be your options port. So if you have a bike that is running a second injector, uh, you wanna run an external map switch, you wanna do some other crazy thing, in the future that hasn't came out yet on motorcycles, that's gonna all go through that. So basically that bigger one is as if the ECU, or sorry, that bigger one is if the bike doesn't come stock with it, we can control some features through that second port. So, okay, so in closing, hopefully some of this stuff has been helpful to let you know how to navigate, how to use the Vortex ECU. Uh, the last thing we're gonna touch on is race gas. Uh, the more, potent in the race gas, the more rich you should go in safety of the clickers. Um, if you have a very highly compressed engine, I would start with pulling the ignition events out of it. So that's like a map two, a map three situation. So that is gonna give you the confidence to go out, ride the motorcycle safely, figure out where it needs to be. Obviously detonation feels almost like there's something in the engine and the chain slapping and it's just under heavy load, high gear coming out of a turn. You'd wanna come off of the ignition advance if your engine is more modified than the one we did the mapping on. So uh, give you a safe approach uh, to go out, have some fun. Uh, most of us aren't riding motorcycles for a living. So you should go through, play with the settings and really get your bike dialed in because if you haven't spent the time to do that and now you've purchased the Vortex ECU that's all got all these cool features, I say go out and do it. Dedicate one day to just feeling what things happen. Um, you bought the ECU so from us, so you've bought into a mapping service. Uh, if you leave map six 
on your map sheet and you, you make me detailed notes, I won't touch map six, that's your favorite. And then I'll go in and I'll listen to why you like map six and then I'll give you some variations of what could like. So if, if it's snowing where you live and you can't ride your bike all winter, send us the detailed notes, send that ECU back in. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave your favorite map and then we are gonna go and create more for you as soon as the ground thaws, you can go out and rip again. So I would say that um, get out and have some fun riding.